Hi guys, it's Weeded and I am here with a much requested video on how to make cold wax medium step by step. I've got a very short video where I talk about it, but here I'm going to actually go through the steps. Before I start making it, I want to talk a little bit about safety. I want to talk a little bit about the equipment that you use, uh, the ingredients and the recipes, and then just one little quick thing about storage. So, safety. You're going to be working with solvents, so the absolute A number one thing is to have really good ventilation. Uh, some artists will only make uh, a cold wax medium or encaustic medium outdoors. Uh, my house is old and drafty, so I can open some doors, open some windows, put a few fans in strategic places and get a good pull through the house. So that's what I do. So ventilation is critical. If you wanted to try to use a respirator, you would have to have a special filter for some of the fumes that are coming through. So I don't really think that it's a good substitution for ventilation. Uh, you might want to use it in addition to ventilation. No flames, no open flame. Again, we're working with solvents. So, or chances are there are some recipes that don't have solvent in them. And then also a fire extinguisher. Uh, we're working with flammable ingredients and we are heating them up so a fire extinguisher is always a good thing to have on hand. Chances are if you do any encaustic medium you have that anyway. Equipment. The first thing to say about equipment is please use dedicated equipment. Now I'm going to show how I make my encaustic medium. I use weight measurement and I do recommend using weight measurement because it is more accurate and when I'm measuring out my ingredients I use dedicated non-food items instead of a nice measuring cup you could absolutely use a nice glass jar I have two kittens that I have rescued that are wreaking havoc in my room so if you hear anything funny uh, it's them so dedicated equipment mason jars would be absolutely perfect to use for this and what I use for my to melt everything and make it is just a little crock pot. It's got some different settings so I can choose which setting I want to use and then of course I have it labeled cold wax. I have another crock pot that I use for encaustic medium. These are the little crock pots. I think I picked mine up at a thrift store. They're found a lot of times in thrift stores and uh, if you don't have a thrift store handy then they're not that expensive to purchase and it just it does a great job of providing that gentle heat that you need. You need a controllable heat source and you don't want it to be um, a big flame okay, or a real high heat and it does a great job of providing that low consistent heat source that you need. Now beeswax can react with different metals or different yeah different metals basically so you want to be careful about what you use uh, beeswax can react with iron uh, copper and plain aluminum uncoated aluminum so avoid anything like that um, I tend to stick to to glass but glass uh, porcelain stainless steel um, I think I read somewhere where you could use silicone I haven't tried that but I do very well with just the, the glass and the crock pot liner which of course which is ceramic with a, a glaze on it which is glass. You'll need a scale because again I recommend that you do things uh, using the weight that's how I do them and that's pretty much it for equipment you don't need a whole lot. Now let's talk about ingredients there are many many ways to make cold wax medium I'm just going to share mine and I've had I've been doing this recipe for so long I don't actually know where I got it but I do have two books that have great sources and this cold wax medium by Rebecca Crowell and Jerry McLaughlin is a fantastic resource and they have a lot of different recipes for cold wax medium. There's one, two, three, four, five, 
six, including a solvent-free recipe. Um, they have six recipes for cold wax medium in here. And again, I'm not actually using any one of those recipes, so there's seven. And this is another great uh, book. I it was not the this book here was was an investment. Um, it was more than I traditionally like to pay for books, but it was very well worth the money. It is, uh, look how thick it is, just chock full of help. Before I knew if I wanted to really get into cold wax medium, I purchased this book, and this book was also excellent and full of tips and let me know that yes, this is something I really like. And between these two books, it's just been, they are just fabulous resources. If I have any questions, I go to them. This book has um, a recipe. I think it's yet another one here on page 55. So there's, like I said, there's different recipes for cold wax medium. The one that I use, let me see if I can zoom in, is right here. And this is, whoops, let me back up a little bit. And this is the one that I have been using for quite some time. So I use one ounce of Damar resin or Damar resin or some kind of way you pronounce that. This is not the same thing as the varnish. I use eight ounces of beeswax. Then I use eight ounces of Ganesol. You can substitute odor, odorless mineral spirits or I've even had, I have not done this, but I know of one person who could not get OMS and they used uh, turpentine and it worked. So I, I haven't done it. I have not tried that. There's certainly no reason why it shouldn't work. As I said, there are many different recipes. This one gives me the consistency that is very similar to um, purchased cold wax medium. I think it's Gamblin purchased cold wax medium. Whenever I'm trying something new, I tend to purchase the item first so that I know what it, it feels like and what its, text, what its texture is and its consistency and what it looks like. And then I know when I make it if that's similar to it. And this one gives me a very similar um, consistency to what I'm used to working with or what I started with. So again, this is by weight. So here is my resin, okay? And I am going to put one ounce of resin in my crock pot with eight ounces of beeswax. But I'm not going to quite do it in that way. I've got to zoom back out. See if I can zoom enough. My little area is crowded. Let me get my scale to zero out. Okay, so it's on zero, zero. And I need an ounce of my resin. Oh, I've never had that happen to me. That's new. Let's try this again. Okay. Zero out. Okay. Uh, One point two. And I th oh, my battery is low. That's what it's trying to tell me. So I'm gonna have to fiddle with it to get quite what I want. That's 1.1, so I'm going to take another little chunk out, and it's telling me it's low, but I saw it flash to 1. So there I've got 1 ounce. So I've got 1 ounce of my resin, and I'm putting that in my crock pot. And I'm going to let you see, this is what the resin looks like up close. Okay, And I've noticed that there's a little bit of discoloration in it. If that shows up, then I may filter it out if I want to. Okay, now I need hopefully my battery to work long enough to get me 8 ounces of beeswax. But I'm not going to use all of the beeswax at one time. I want to measure it first. 
and just went low on me. Nice. So, zero. Pull real quick. Come on. Uh, 6.1. This probably is going to take the rest of this. Try this again. Zero. And just tell me I've got eight ounces and I'll be happy. 7.4. Okay, so I'm going to have to add a little bit more beeswax. And I think I can guesstimate it up to eight ounces without stressing that poor scale too much. So, I'm opening another thing. I ran out, that was the last of that, that beeswax, so now I'm using some more. And the uh, beeswax that I'm talking about, let's see, and I am going to double check the measurements. I really do like the consistency that I get. I want it to zero. There it is. And I went over. Wow, I sure did. It's a good thing I'm checking this. Let's try it again. This is my guesstimate was way off. deal. Okay. I feel comfortable that I've got right at about 8 ounces. So I have put my resin in my crock pot. Okay. And I've measured my wax out. But I'm not going to use the entire 8 ounces at this time. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get everything out of the way so that you can see what it starts to look like. So I'm not going to melt all of it. I'm going to put just enough beeswax in and there's no magic amount. I just want the beeswax to melt. It'll melt first and then I want the resin to melt into the beeswax. So I'm going to plug up my crock pot and show you what it looks like. There we go. And now I have turned it on high just to get the, the beeswax to melt and then I'm going to cover it. Now while this is melting, and I'm going to set it to the side here, talk about storage and I do have a storage tip. This is what I put my, I had some cold wax in my crock pot. This is where I put it. I put it in this little ceramic jar and it's got a rubber stopper to help it keep it nice and airtight and then I also put cling wrap over it. Now I've been using this one poor piece of cling wrap forever, but pressing it down on top of your cold wax to make sure that you don't have any air keeps it from hardening along the top. I made that mistake and I also have a video showing how I learned, oh don't do that, just put the cling wrap down right at, next to your cold wax. There you go, I don't know if you can see that and that will help protect your cold wax. So that's my storage tip. I'm going to let it melt down a little bit and then I will come back and show you what what it's looking like. Okay, I had the, the crock pot on high to melt the resin and this is, I don't know if you can really see it's dripping. So now I've melted that little bit of beeswax and the resin has gone ahead and melted in. I've turned the crock pot down 
because I don't really want it on high. I was just in a hurry to melt the resin. So I am going to stir it to try and help it disperse into the beeswax. And I'm just going to let you see how this goes. It works, but you do have to stir it. And I do see a little, there's one little bit of impurity right there. So I'm going to pull it out. I hope I got it. Now this is hot, so I don't really want to touch it. And I'm not sure that I did. Nope, it's still right there. It's always a trick trying to get that. And it's still not coming out. It may be, there it is. So at this point, if I do see any impurities because of my Damor resin, or however you pronounce it, I, I feel quite certain I'm mispronouncing it, then I go ahead and fish out whatever I can. I don't worry too much about it. I do see some little specks in there, but again, I really don't worry that much because I can pull it out um, when I'm working, I'm sitting there looking at it and trying to think and it, I just need to focus on what I'm doing. Um, you can strain it at this point if you wanted to go let it go through cheesecloth because I have distributed the resin and that would certainly get out uh, some of those impurities down there. What I have found though is that they're not a big deal for me. You'll, you'll see them if you don't like what they do then you can pull them out but generally I don't even notice them when I'm working so but there it has melted in good except there is one really big chunk I think I see right here now that one is big enough that it would disturb me okay so fish that out there are some other little ones that probably would never even be noticed so at this point once I have melted the resin into that little bit of beeswax I go ahead and by the way these are great stir sticks I go ahead and I put in the rest of the beeswax so here we go all right there and a little pellet right there Beeswax comes in many forms. This is just the pellet form. I like the pellet form because it melts quickly and easily. And I love playing with wax, y'all. I just really do. Which is, there's no reason for me to be doing this, but I, other than I just want to. We don't need my hair in there. Okay. So I'm going to cover this and let it melt and then I'll be back. Okay, and here we go. It has melted all but just this little bit which I kind of want to play with. It needs to be completely melted for the next step. But at this point I basically have encaustic medium. If that was what I was making I would just let this a um, little bit of wax. I can't resist playing with wax. It's just so fun. But I would let this little bit of wax melt and make sure I stirred everything up really well because you want to get the resin mixed in with everything. And that would be it. I would have encaustic medium. So I'm trying to get it to melt by stirring it because then we can go to the next step. The next step is to add the solvent to this and there we go. I have gotten it completely melted. I'm stirring it to distribute the resin throughout. I do want it all mixed in very well. Okay, I'm going to set this aside. 
and again this is encaustic medium at this point so oops I found a little pellet let's put that in there and get that to mix around see if we can get it to melt because again playing with wax is fun okay so while that's trying to melt I'm going to set this aside and we're going to start the next phase which is again my recipe is uh, one ounce of resin eight ounces of beeswax and eight ounces of gamsol so I need to weigh my gamsol take this goodness I did forget that it was low battery I should have replaced that mm -hmm. so we're going to try this again I meant to do that before I started recording it, and, and I didn't. Okay, I've got 6.4 ounces. Alright, I'm going to see if that's about 8. Yep, 8.5. So I'm going to get rid of about that much. That should be good. Okay. So now that I have 8 ounces of my solvent, and again, I'm using Gamsol here, uh, odorless mineral spirits, whatever. Again, there are so many different recipes that you can use. So, I'm really, I'm going to turn this off now, and slowly stir in my gamsol. Okay. So I'm going to stir it in, mix it up well, because again, I really want the beeswax, the solvent, and the resin to be consistent throughout. I've never had a problem with it not being consistent, but I want to be sure. And basically, we're done. What I need to do now is just let this uh, cool and I should have a nice little crock pot full of cold wax. I'm going to allow this to, to cool and then I will show you what it looks like. But I will say now in case I forget later, one of the things to remember is if I don't like the texture of this, if I found it's not thick enough, then I remelt it and I add some more beeswax pellets. If I find that it's too thick, then I melt it and I add some more Gamsol. So it's one of those processes that you don't have to get exactly perfect because it is adjustable afterwards. I've never had to adjust my recipe. I've, it's always been just fine, so I've been very fortunate in that. But it does make me feel better to know that if I do need to adjust it that it's not an all or nothing process here okay okay so it's cool and this is what the surface looks like I'm kind of expecting it not to be maybe solid all the way through uh, simply because it's not been that long uh, for the time span of this video uh, basically I think this has been um, four hours since the very beginning when I was weighing and measuring if that gives you a timeline and while I don't sit there and watch the crock pot I don't really leave it unattended 
either just simply because I am dealing with solvents and I'm heating them up so I'm kind of curious to see what happens when I dig into this it's very soft right now and I think if I yeah if I don't know if you'll be able to see this but and it's the stick is a little warm the uh, cold wax that's up here is more opaque and down here where it's still really I guess solidifying it is a little more transparent but this is what it looks like and this looks like it's going to be a good batch I've actually never had to redo a batch with this particular recipe so what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to put um, saran wrap or wax not wax paper uh, plastic wrap over the top of it to protect it and set it aside but actually if I wanted to I could use some of this right now so that's it that is how you make cold wax medium from uh, step by step from beginning to end and again this really the entire time span was about uh, four hours for making this and uh, again not not having to stand over it or anything else but again not leaving it unattended while it was heating up so that's it please let me know in the comments below if you have any um, questions and remember there are many many recipes out there there are other ways to do this um, a lot of people will use like a unused paint can and just put it on something like a, a griddle uh, with a very low heat and certainly you would never want to leave that unattended but safety first guys bye bye